Welcome to uh, part four of Let's Play Skyrim. So at the end of my last video, I returned to the dungeon having sold the stuff that I gathered on the way in and the stuff from the first room. And in the last uh, video, I talked about the, um, about the mage type skills. Now let's talk a little bit about the warrior type skills. So the warrior skills have, uh, they focus on using equipment effectively. You have, um, in, those, uh, in the skills you have archery, one-handed and two-handed, all of which make weapons uh, better. Uh, let's light things up a little bit. Spider web, so joy. And it might be helpful to have the weapon out. And let's duck down a little bit. Okay, nothing dangerous right here. And these urns all carry gold and sometimes some extra goodies, like gemstones. Gemstones are great because whoops. Because eventually you can use them to craft um, to craft jewelry which happens to boost, boost your smithing skill. Awesome! Anyhow, so there's archery one-handed and two-handed, all of which increase the effectiveness of those kinds of weapons. Let's see, was there anything up here? No. There's block, which increases the efficiency of, of shields. And the shield is, is basically, all, um, it's a, a, an equipment slot where Although you get the enchantments that are on your shields if you just have the shield equipped, if you actually want to use the shield uh, in the fullest sense, then you have to raise it and hold it up while you're being hit by, uh, by a weapon, which is fine. You get used to it. It's pretty useful later in the game. Earlier in the game, it's uh, not quite as useful because your early shields don't actually have a lot of power. Oop, there is a month or a person down there. Let's see if we can give deliver to him an arrow. Okay. No. Okay. Oop. Actually, yes. Sweet. But in doing so, we alerted some people, and they will probably be sneaking up here. No. Maybe they're on the other side of that wall. Okay. Cool. So there's also all these fun little puzzles in the game. For these puzzles, you need to generally turn them in the right direction. Now this puzzle, I don't quite remember how it worked. It was snake and something and dolphin. Okay, well we can certainly manage that. Snake, dolphin, and I guess we'll just leave this one Alone. Oh, there's a dead guy who apparently got the puzzle wrong. Gold. Could pick up a torch. Let's scoop up his stuff. Let's get this. No, we got it wrong. I got hit by some arrows. Oh, well, there's a snake emblem there. Oh, actually, maybe that's meant to have fallen off the wall up there. That would make sense. So let's turn to snake, snake, dolphin. And just re flip this. Sweet, that opened the, uh, opened the door. Slide things up again. Oop. So at this point in the game, if you cast a spell, it makes some noise, and that will alert some en uh, enemies that you're around. But the enemies are not, oh, there, there we go. There's an enemy. A rat, hello rat. Whoa. Happened there. That ran off. Okay. Well, that's good. Oop, no, didn't stay off. Ooh. Okay. We can get some rat tails from this. Let's see if that other rat is gonna come up and say hello. Probably. What? Let's try and I think it's getting confused. Sweet, we got it. Okay, so the rat is dead. Oh yeah, 
And here is a skill book. Skill books are great because they give you a free boost to whatever skill they're relevant to. Here is a soul stone, or soul gems. Sel soul gems are awesome in that if you use a certain spell uh, on an enemy before you kill it, then their soul gets sucked into the gem and you can use it to power enchantments. Uh, provided that, uh, that the gem is big enough to hold their soul and animals have different size souls depending on how tough they are. Okay, here we are down here. Nothing that important. Just have to scroll a fireball. Um, grab it. Scrolls are nice and light. Always makes sense to get them. Oop. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a cute little bit here. Grab your skeleton for some gold. Skeletons normally have gold. And so if somebody needs help up there, let's chop the way through and say hello. Hey dude. Whoa, hello. So there is a giant spider. And Hello, spider. And spiders are actually pretty creepy and are pretty dangerous. You do not want to let them let the giant spiders hit you. Hello, Mr. Spider. Oh, normally they run back whenever they can't get you, but it looks like I am just the right distance that he is not interested in running away. So I can just stand here and shoot him with arrows, and he is dead. Retrieve some arrows, get frostbite venom. Any more surprises up there? No. Cool. Urns also tend to have gold and sometimes some goodies, so it is always fun to search them. Egg sacks have spider eggs, which are good for alchemy. is a wrapped up skeever, which is the rat thing. I don't think that actually opens up, which is good because I do not want to fall down there. And a lockpick. Sweet. Another skeever tail. More spider eggs. More gold. Yeah, so loot as much as you can. Although you eventually will have to learn how to be smart about Avoiding carrying too much. So this guy, hi. You did it. You killed it. Now cut me down before anything else shows up. So he wants to be cut down. Yes, the claw. I know how it works. The claw, the markings, the door, and the hall of stories. I know how they all fit together. I don't know. Help me down, and I'll show you. you so I guess somehow my character knew that the uh, the claw was. Uh, Sweet breath of arcade. Thank you. Was stolen by this guy, which is weird. Let's it's cut him rough. down. Hey, dude. You okay? Oh, what a douche. Okay, well, go ahead and run off. Jerk. Uh, let's see. Any more goodies like this. Oh, there's a burial urn that still has some gold in it. That's good. Some uh, soul gem. And, uh... More goodies, including a healing potion. Those are always great. Let's brighten things up a little bit. And switch back to our bow. Always get a little bit nervous about things like this, but there are also some stuff to, to take. Oh, so yeah, these dungeons they tend to have Draugr, which are the game's equivalent of zombies. And they are not fun to tangle with. And although uh, they do tend to drop weapons, their weapons are particularly... They don't sell for very much because they're not that effective, so you are generally better off not picking them up. And there is one more monster over there somewhere. Can't see him. Okay, there he is. Hello, uh, Mr. Draugr. And 
you are running that way and I'm missing. And I'm gonna switch to a sword because you're getting kinda close. That's how you hold I hold out my shield when he takes a swing, and I take less damage from his weapon, and if my shield is good enough and my blocking skill is good enough, I actually take no damage, which is pretty rocking. But you have to do it, uh, you have to block often enough to get really good with the shield. And you might notice that spiky looking thing up ahead. I'll explain when we get closer to it. Yeah, so... That is a spiky wall. You will notice that thing on the floor. Oh yeah, so this is the guy that ran off. So I got the golden claw back, got his journal, and I think this is the golden claw that was stolen back, or st uh, stolen from the store that we visited before. Grab all his stuff. We don't want the ancient Nord stuff. And I want to avoid stepping on that thing on the floor. Let's drag him out of the way. Just to be safe, and to be extra safe, we'll save. Just because it would be pretty lousy to accidentally step on that thing and suddenly have it swing around and kill us. Now, we can see a Draugr up ahead. You eventually get pretty decent at spotting when something is a Draugr, whether it's uh, versus just an, another corpse. You can see that this is a restless dragger. So he's actually tougher than most of the previous draggers, and he actually is using magic against us, which is pretty unpleasant. Oh, shoot. Okay. So we chop that guy down. And we made enough progress. Oh! Okay, this is not good. Fighting two people at once. Oh, and I'm almost dead. So, this is one of the nice things about potions. They don't take any time to drink, so you can just drink uh, as many as you need to at any given moment. And, whoop, was there another guy? Oh, there was. Somewhere. Oh. Uh, yeah, there's a dragger up there with a bow. Well, we can return fire. And we should keep on moving so that we're not hit by... Going in the dark. Sweet. Okay, he's dead. That is good, but we took some damage, so let's heal up. And we're also going to ourselves a little bit more light to work with. Loot the corpses while avoiding the ancient Nord weapons because yeah they just they don't sell for very much and they're pretty heavy. So that actually illustrate, uh, illustrates an important point in the game. When you're heading through a dungeon you won't be able to pick up everything that's in the dungeon. So what you actually want to focus on is the stuff that has a great ratio of weight to value. The really lousy stuff will have a ratio of uh, like maybe one to one, like it'll be one pound per gold, or, or one gold per pound of whatever it is. Um, that's a lousy rate. Now you see this iron sword here, it weighs nine, it has a value of 25. So it has a, uh, it's worth about three gold per pound, roughly speaking. That's still pretty lousy, but you can do a lot worse uh, early uh, in the game. Later in the game, you're gonna be a lot more selective. And here's a spinning trap. So we're gonna wanna run through this when the time is right. Okay, there we go. We can turn off the spinning trap by pulling down the chain switch back to a weapon, and keep on going through. Now you can shoot these things and they'll drop and set the floor on fire. But we don't have an enemy near us right now. And so I suppose we could lure an enemy back. Oh, well actually that's not a terrible idea here. Oop, got caught. Set that 
add on. Oh, might actually work. So a lot of the time when you have those, the floor is, is made of oil. And you can, uh, and it will actually light the floor on fire. That just made a little bit of an explosion, so I would have actually had to have hit the enemy directly with it to do much damage. But in later dungeons, that can be kind of fun. Oh yeah, here's an example of a floor that's made of oil. So I will shoot this dude, and then when he comes after me, I will shoot the pot, and it will send fire all throughout the floor down that path and hopefully wipe out some en uh, en enemies for me. Or not. Yeah, you'll notice I generally will switch to a sword when uh, the enemies get too nearby because... Whoa. Oh, well, no need for that. Scoop up bone meal and some gold. And again, ignore the ancient Nord weapons. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, there are a lot of great weapons that you want to, uh, that you might consider using, that have a poor weight to uh, damage uh, ratio, just because they have such a good amount of damage. That is fine, but if you're looting, you're not actually going to be using the weapons, so you might as well go for ones that are worth a lot for the weight. And so let's let's think a little bit about the kind of stuff that you're going to want to be carrying with you throughout the game. In general, you're you're going to want the stuff that has the absolute best weight to uh, weight to value ratio that you can get. So wines. If you find lots of wines in a dungeon, scoop them up. Uh, if you find arrows. Arrows don't actually weigh anything in the game, so always grab those no matter how lousy they are. Now initially arrows won't actually sell for anything. Uh, where am I going? Oh, there, that's where I'm going. The chain. If you remember I'm in this dungeon to go find a dragon tablet for the guy back in Whiterun. Let's give me a little bit more light here. There's another thing I can get. Flowing mushrooms for alchemy. I think up ahead, not the real monsters, maybe there's not in this area. Yeah. Alchemy ingredients don't tend to weigh a lot, so just scoop them up whenever you can, as much as you can. Later on you can be a little bit more selective, but for now we'll just grab everything we can. Uh, none of this stuff is heavy. Potions are a good good thing to scoop up for looting. Let's see. Yeah, there's a guy that we can shoot from up here with very little danger. Oh, well, if we were faster or too slow. So we can shoot him as he comes around here, I think. Fine clothes are sometimes... Uh, Good that way. Ooh, ouch. Oh yeah, so I probably should finish taking that. Ooh. That combat gets kind of scary when it's dark. Amulets. There's another one of those ancient Nord weapons. More of those. Let's level them. Let's go with a little bit more health this time. And we are going to take uh, take a perk in... Well, let's go with smithing. Because we have a little bit of uh, steel in our infantry. It would be nice to actually put it to some use so that we're not carrying it around forever. And right now we don't have anywhere to put it, so we have to basically carry everything. Later on, we will hopefully have places to leave stuff, but we don't right now. Let's light things up. And switch back to the bow. Some more mushrooms. Oh. Yeah, the downside of these mushrooms is they're really hard to uh, to click on at times. Okay, so go forward here. Good. Oh yeah. So the other um, the other uh, muscle type skill that I think I forgot to mention 
is smithing. And smithing is is pretty cool. It lets you uh, make equipment and it lets you improve equipment. Making equipment uh, basically you can make some basic recipes initially and uh, more recipes open up as you get the appropriate perks. Let's get this guy. Okay, now we're going to back off and run back down here. Hopefully we can get far enough away that he will stop coming at us. Apparently not. So we're going to switch back to the weapon. It's a little bit too slow there to actually block. Ooh, ouch. Ow. Okay, let's heal up. I would have taken another blow. I probably would have had to have used a potion. Unfortunately, monsters can uh, can score critical hits on you, so you're really kind of uh, not playing it very safe if you let your health get down much further than that. Also note that you only can do sneak attacks while you're sneaking, and you move slower when you're sneaking, so you kind of have to prepare uh, prepare your sneak attacks. Which is fine. This takes us into, I think, the inner area. Yeah, so in, in any case, yeah, you're probably going to want to develop the smithing skill uh, pretty far if you really want to be doing well in the end game. And the smithing skill is kind of unusual in that the perks go down two separate trees, the heavy armor path and the light armor path, and you're normally just going to choose one. You could do both, but you would end up spending a lot of perks on armor that you're just going to sell rather than ever use. So I would recommend only going down one path. And with this character, I'm going down the light path. And then there's uh, thief skills. Oh shoot, another one of these running things. So let's get right up to the danger zone. Just time our running forwards appropriately, I think. Not surprisingly. Ooh. Okay, good. And I think somewhere up there. Yeah, I can see some monsters by my compass decided to come out. So we will have to deal with them. We can do that flame trick. And sweet. So, yeah, we'll pick up some more arrows. And, uh, yeah, as I said, um, arrows don't weigh anything, so just keep on collecting them. Uh, they won't initially sell for anything. Later on, when you raise your speech skill enough, they might sell for one to two gold a piece. Some of the really nice arrows might sell for more. Um, but until then, you can just hang on to them. And it, yeah, because they don't weigh any, uh, anything, it certainly won't hurt you. And it'll mean that you'll, you won't have to worry about running out of arrows, which is great if you use a bow. Although some of the lousy arrows, they won't do that much damage. I believe that the that the damage that bows and arrows do is some combination of the bow strength and the arrow strength. It might be an average, it might be a sum, I'm not sure. So this is one of those um, th uh, fun types of puzzles that it dep uh, depends on uh, a claw. We got a gold claw from that guy back there, so let's take a look at it. It's down in the misc section of my inventory, and this, the combination is bear, moth, owl. So we will rotate each of the components of this appropriately. Bear, moth, and owl. Then we activate the keyhole. If you get it wrong, then normally just some arrows will shoot 
at you and you'll be poisoned. The arrows aren't that bad, particularly if you step off to the side of the room, but it is probably smarter just to avoid uh, even the chance of, of being damaged too much by them. Because they are poisoned, I suppose you can just uh, heal yourself afterwards and maybe buff restoration a little bit that way. is one of those boss rooms. I think normally the coffins open up. Maybe not. But there will be, I think, a boss up there that I'm going to have the pleasure of fighting. Oh yeah, this is, uh, these are called word walls. And they give you, um, they, uh, they'll teach you shouts, which uh, you will eventually spend dragon souls on to master. Ooh. I do not like being in close quarters with those guys, because they are very tough for my level. So you probably generally want to hold back, keep running. Do not let that guy hook his sword onto your body. He will actually he actually knows some shouts. Ooh, ouch. Oh, and actually we got enough experience to level up. Let's do that really quickly here. Let's go with health again. You get a free refill on health. When uh let's boost enchanting because I think at some point we're gonna we will be enchanting at, uh, fairly early in the game. Let's stay back from this guy. Oh shoot, he's getting kind of close. Fortunately, he is not as agile as I am. So, it's not that hard to stay on the other side of all these things from him. Dude. Yeah. The undead are not known for being brainy, so use them, abuse the terrain as much as possible, because they will happily put swords into you otherwise. And uh, where is he? Almost dead. And let's finish him off with my sword. Sweet. So he is dead. We have the dragon stone, which is what we're here for. Ordinarily we shouldn't grab these, but this one has an enchantment on it of cold, and we can use that to learn that enchantment, so we will bring it with us. Let's see what's in the chest. Extra armor. Spell, might as well just use it. War Axe of Sapping, that's another enchantment to learn. Some Hide Armor. Now you notice Hide Armor is actually pretty nice to grab because it has a 50 value and just five, uh, five pounds, so that is uh, 10 gold per pound. And that is a good ratio. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. Generally, wines are better. Oh yeah, so we learned a word and most dungeons have a quick exit from the end so that you don't have to walk all the way back out. And this one is no exception. We'll run up here. There's a handle which will cause the wall to lift up. And we will run through here and out. And yeah, this is something that we weren't able to jump up before. Gold, just light the way, and head back out to Skyrim. Okay, so before we wrap up this uh, this um, this let's play, let's talk quickly about the thief skills. Alchemy. 
So with alchemy, you can mix two to three ingredients to make a potion. And potions can either be poisons or they can be buffs. Let's head back to white one. You have light armor, which is... Uh, so warriors have the heavy armor skill. Thieves have the light armor skill. And generally, the, the skill trees are pretty much the same. Uh, they improve the, uh, the effectiveness of your armor, and the perks just give you uh, additional cool things like making the armor not weigh anything or have it uh, absorb uh, more types of damage. There's lock picking, which is pretty useful because there are a lot of locks in the game, and uh, every boost to that skill will make it easier to uh, pick those locks. We're going to wait here for what's-her-name to show up so that we can sell her some of the stuff that we picked up. There's pickpocketing, which I don't tend to use a lot, but it can be useful to grab stuff from NPCs without them noticing. Although the game remembers uh, uh, what's stolen and what's not, so you have to be, uh, you have to be a little bit uh, um, selective in what you steal because you're not typically going to be able to sell stuff uh, that you um, that you left. Okay, can sell iron dagger, iron sword, wax, the maces. Uh, we'll keep the woodcutter's axe for now. Sell the yeah, definitely sell the heavy armor that we got. And sell extra iron shields. So yeah, that gave us more to work with. Let's see, did we end up grabbing any more skins from creatures along the way? No, we didn't. Okay, let's see if we can improve any of our armor. Oh, we have an extra hide shield. That's weird. Would have thought that I. I don't claim. Take a look. Well, let's sell the extra hide shield. Oh, actually, we to quit. You've improved our speech skill. Yeah, every bit of speech skill that you uh, end up improving will improve the prices of everything. So it's kind of an important thing to, uh, to level up. Um, let's see if we can actually do any... Have you met my father? He's a steward of do any the more crafting with the stuff that we have on hand. I help my father oh, so we're going to need to make leather uh, strips. Leather strips, uh, you make them out of your leather. And leather strips are used in almost everything. So you gain experience based on the value of stuff that you either craft or improve. So go for the uh, go for the stuff that's high value, ideally if it doesn't take too much uh, too too many raw materials to uh, to make. Okay, so we made some stuff. Let's see if we can improve any of it before we sell. Yep, cool. Give us a little bit more experience, and now we can sell this stuff to her. Yeah, it's heavy armor, so we wouldn't really be thinking about using it ourselves. And we also have a little bit of stuff that she won't buy. Typically, NPCs will only buy the general kinds of things that they sell, but there are a few NPCs that will buy and sell almost everything, and those are general goods uh, salesmen. And this is one of them. Take a good look around. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Everything. Trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. Yeah, so we will sell this. I guess we might as well actually equip this. We can sell the tunic. We're not going to have a use for circlets for a while, so might as well just sell it. Did we pick? Yeah, I guess we picked up some scrolls. We'll sell those, sell the wines, and yeah, basically all the food that we have because it's not a very efficient way to recover health. Sell that book, sell this journal, and as well, yeah, it's not actually worth anything, but it gets to have our inventory. 
Uh, okay. So that's all we need to do here. Oh, here's a spell book. Or not spell book, a uh, skill book. So we can read it without actually grabbing it, which is kind of cool. He can keep it, and we still get the benefit from it. Um, otherwise, if you steal stuff and then PCs notice it, then they will put a bounty out on you, and that is not good. Nothing of our struggles, our suffering. So other skills, uh, sneak, which is a pretty important skill, and if you're sneaking, this is what it looks like, it makes it harder for enemies to spot you, and if you sneak while you're not in sight, then eventually they'll forget about you, you'll have another chance to come and get at it. And speech, which lowers the cost of things that you're buying and raises the cost of things that you're selling. And it also improves the chances of your um, being able to intimidate people or convince them of stuff. Important skill, but it happens to be a hard skill to level quickly. So the reason that we're standing here is that if we talk with her, she'll start a quest. They say that he was killed, but I know better. I know my son is alive. So we'll get the quest, and we'll take care of it whenever we're in the right part of the map to uh, to handle it. And yet they lie to my very face. I just please visit me at my home. I can tell you the whole. So once I've made enough money trading with the Kishi, about the same as. The way I hear it, elsewhere ain't nothing like stuff. Before my... I met one of the caravan leaders. You do that? If you find one, I could teach you a thing or two about trading. So yeah, uh, basically collect as many skills as you can because they will end up being useful. Uh, where was Yasolda? Because we just took the quest to meet her in her home. Oh yeah, it's up there. So let's run up to her home meet her really quickly and then we will go up and talk to the Jarl and that will end today's uh, today's adventures yeah. keep on grabbing stuff that will be useful for, for alchemy at some point uh, no that wasn't it okay so it is to our right we turn left 90 degrees ah it's here yeah not, not feeling very observant it's not easy being so let's step in here, have a quick chat with her. And there's nothing a man can do that I can't do better, whether it's serving drinks or slaying children. Mother, what's the meaning of this? Who have you brought into our home? Adelstein, put that down. She's here to help us find Thorold. How do we know she's not spying for the Battleborn? This was foolish. We can't trust anyone. Who knows what they'll do if they find me here? I can't take any more of this. No weapons. Please, anything. Thoros, he's afraid. Please help Baldestine if you can. Something All right, has mother. to be done. So, you're, you're here to help? Lines. I know that Thoral's not dead. I just know it. So, basically, what's going on here is that but I, I think his brother or his son those damn battle is missing. They and he believes that uh, the guy is still alive. The house myself, so I need anything that confirms that they'd be hiding it, of course. But you might be able to butter them up enough to lower their the their connection. They knew Thor locked him up someplace to get back in my family. So yeah, we need to find evidence of what was going on, and then uh, we can uh, help them out. But yeah, we're just gonna start the quest. One of the uh, one of the important things to do in this game is not to do um, you don't just pick a quest and do it it's helpful if you can uh, gather together quests that are in a certain part of the world and then you take care of them all at once and that will save you time so let's go in here and get ready to meet with the Yarrow and then we will be done for today
So just to recap, uh, we are at level five. We've picked up a few uh, skills in smithing, in uh, let's see, archery, and in speech. And we have to bring this dragonstone back to the mage guy, but we'll take care of that in the next uh, in the next let's play. So we will save, and we are out of there.